Hello fellow cyborgs and welcome to another book review, this one of The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. I buddy read this with Acacia Ives and she finished it way ahead of me, but I fortunately finally got to finish it and today I intend to talk to you a bit more about it. But before we get any further, book haiku. Racial indifference maintains the injustice more than lynchings and mobs. The New Jim Crow is a non-fiction book by Michelle Alexander, which argues that the mass incarceration in consequence of the war on drugs in America is a new racial caste system permanently subjecting black and brown criminals to a second-class citizen state by the use of the label criminal. If you're interested in that statement and want the Cliff Notes version, I recommend you check out Michelle Alexander's TED Talk, which talks about the exact same thing here. This book is a more in-depth look at the mechanisms that have allowed and do allow this to happen. But if you're just interested in an overview, I recommend checking out that video. I really enjoyed reading The New Jim Crow as much as you could enjoy reading about something that makes you angry and upset and a little despondent at the same time. But I read this incredibly actively. I underlined probably about 35% of this and would not read this without out a pen in my hand because it was jam-packed full of information that I think will aid me in race discussions with family members and friends in the future. I especially love chapter one, which gives you an overview of the racial caste systems that we've had in America, specifically that of slavery, then the Jim Crow laws, and as Alexander argues, now the mass incarceration. We also get to hear about the creation of the war on drugs, and how in an age of colorblindness, rhetoric about crime actually has far more racial implications than we like to believe, and how the war on drugs and the marketing and propaganda advertisements put on in the 80s, which mainly focus on crack cocaine use in black ghetto neighborhoods, is what is principally responsible for our stereotype idea that black young men are nothing but criminals. I learned so much in this book and a lot of it has stuck with me, but a lot of it hasn't. This book is jam-packed with numerical figures, but this is written in a highly readable and her ideas are expressed in a very simple way so that if you are at all inclined to read about this topic, that this book will not be dry, it won't be too much for you to read. Its length but also its writing style is fairly colloquial, though Alexander never insults your intelligence by dumbing it down too much. It's just really well presented, this complicated information. I think the main takeaway here is is that the racial caste systems that have been and are in place in America come from racial tensions, but are spearheaded by the white elites. The white elites have power over the poorer and lower classes within America, which include both minority and majority races. Those lower classes could band together and revolt against the white elites and their discrimination and subjugation, but instead the white elites have over and over again played with racial bias to get the poor whites on their side against minorities so that the white elite's power is not contested. In fact, this happened before slavery was even a thing in America. In the 1600s, most farm work was done by indentured servants rather than slaves, but once those servants started revolting with both white and black indentured servants joining together, the planter elites got really nervous and decided that they would rather have slaves to work their fields. Because white slaves might be able to speak the language and organize, they decided to import African slaves who wouldn't be able to create a revolt. And that is how slavery started in America. <sighs> there are all sorts of facts like that that I wasn't aware about, I wasn't aware of the implications and the historical complexities that make me angry and also make me far more well-informed than I was before reading The New Jim Crow. My only disappointment in this is I was hoping that Alexander would somehow give us an idea of how our racial inequality and injustice can be dismantled, how the mass incarceration in consequence of the war on drugs can be stopped and this racial caste system in America can be dissolved 
resolved and once and for all. But she says right up front, and I should have listened to her, that she, this book is not there for that. This is not the book's purpose. This book's purpose is simply to make people recognize that mass incarceration is a racial caste system. And once more people recognize that this is what's happening in America in an age of colorblindness, then other people can take up the gauntlet and we can join hands and hopefully stop this horrible thing from continuing. So I have to give Alexander props that she did everything she promised to do, but I think I was just looking for a little bit more. That being said, I still really enjoyed this and this has a four star rating from me, which is very well deserved. If you at all are interested in reading up on the topic of mass incarceration and the war on drugs and how that intersects with race in America, then I highly recommend you pick this up. This is very readable, but also full of facts and figures so that you know that what is being talked about isn't just conjecture. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's not whining. It is the honest truth. Thank, thank, thank you for watching my review of The New Jim Crow. I hope I let you know a little bit more about that book because nonfictions are kind of hard to judge sometimes, aren't they? In any case, thank, thank, thank you for watching and until next time, continue to be lovely. And thank you to my supportive patrons over on Patreon. I very much love your continued support of me and my channel and I hope that you are reading some compelling nonfiction.